What is good? Welcome back to the channel. Look what I got here. This right here is the NC500. Uh, this is Orwo's newest color film, the Wolfen NC500. A lot of kind of back and forth on this film for a couple different reasons. First off, if you probably watched this video linked above here, I actually tested um, the prototype of this film many months ago. I asked Orwo to send me some and they did and that was very nice for them. Um, but the results were very peculiar. I won't get into it too much. You can of course watch the video. But um, I didn't like the result very much and the film didn't feel like the actual real product compared to the things you would see on their website, for example. Um, I don't know, I have nothing really else to say there, but because of that experience, I was very kind of excited to get my hands on this, which is the official release, the actual film that's being sold to everybody. So this is finally something I got and funny enough, I had to go buy this at the store. The rolls that I ordered many months ago, like many of you watching this video, I still haven't gotten, so I don't know. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are a bit disappointed, but anyways, I got my hands on this and my goal with this is to figure out if this is gonna be better than the roles that I tested many months ago. This video is sponsored by the New Classic Film Web Shop, the best place to shop for all your favorite film stocks. And the short answer is yes. This film is actually a good product that has you know proper rendition and has a real look to it. It doesn't look like it's kind of some random thing that was left over somewhere, such as my previous experience. So a couple things to talk about with regards to NC500. Um, in terms of the look, this film is very desaturated. Um, it's a very interesting look. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but if you look at the images here on the screen, the images are very flat in terms of color. Nothing really pops. There's no particular color that shines more than the other. Um, and it's a very just kind of clear filmic desaturated look. It's one way to kind of show classic film look. Um, another thing to notice is the amount of grain. This film is an ISO 500 film, and therefore that means that it's a bit more sensitive to light, and typically with that, you'll get a lot more grain. This isn't kind of a very polished high-end look the way you would get from Kodak Vision 3, where the grain is very subtle and very controlled and you know just kind of not in the way. Here, the grain is very obvious, especially if you don't expose your images right. Um, you don't have, it seems like you don't have that much latitude in, in kind of the shadows and the blacks, for example. Um, if you don't pull those all the way down to black, you are gonna get some very clear kind of faded blacks and that's where the grain really kind of shows itself. So it's part of the look. It's definitely something unique to this film that you don't see very often with other films that are out there unless you purposefully underexpose them and then try to recover the shadows in post. So those two things are probably the key things you're gonna notice about the look of the film. Let's actually look at some prints because scanning is one thing, as we all know, but printing RA4 in the darkroom is another. This film is a C41 film, which technically means it's kind of part of that class of film that's designed for darkroom printing, but that's all I really know. I don't know if this film is C41 in name or if there's an actual reason behind it. So I jumped in the darkroom and I made a couple prints. We have two prints right here. I'm holding them down because this Fuji glossy paper that I've been using now, uh, it's very curly because this is from a roll. So it was cut by hand um, by my lab darkroom, but it's still very curvy, which is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. So what I want to show you here is kind of this look for this film when it comes to RA4 printing. Cause I think that's where you get the truest rendition of colors. Let's look at this one first. Uh, this one's a bit warmer and a little bit kind of with a hint of green. This is what the colors on most of my scans look like. And of course that can be changed, but that's what I initially saw. And the qualities are very clear here, like what you see in the scans in terms of the look. So everything is desaturated. There's no color here that really sticks out. You got blues here and there. You got some green, some red. All of them are still very desaturated. And I don't think it matters how much more I print this in terms of longer exposure time. So I don't think that's gonna change. Grain wise, um, it's very evident, especially when you get close and you look, uh, the black areas especially, lots of grain. Um, and I don't think this is because of underexposure, but maybe it is a, a slight underexposure given that this film theoretically might be a 400 speed film. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but you do see grain everywhere else as well. Like this is very bright here and you still see a bit of that softness. This film isn't very sharp per se. I don't think you're gonna shoot this and get very detailed uh, rendition. So you got the green, you got the, you know, slight softness, and then of course the lack of saturation. Uh, we can look at another version of this print right here. This is one that I made to be a bit more blue, let's say truer to daylight perhaps, I don't know, you, you make the decision. 
But same idea here. Um, the blue still don't really pop, as you see here with the jeans and that jacket there and this little hat. And then, you know, everything else is still very desaturated. So very interesting film. I think there's a time and place for this look. Some people might really like this given how, you know, vintage it might look and, and that appeal. But when you compare this to other films that are out there, um, the colors here are very, very different. Um, you don't get anything kind of strong here. Everything is much more subdued and uh, a bit more contrasty as well because you do lose a lot of detail very quickly in the darker parts of the image, especially when there's black. Um, so yeah, that's the look for this film. Um, it's not my favorite, let's say, um, but I think there's might be some interesting things you can do with this. I am really curious though, if you dev this in ECN2, uh, the negative itself, and then you scan it with a uh, cinema scanner, you might be able to do a lot of really cool things with a uh, log file um, from the scanning. Log files are very flat intentionally, and then you can pump in as much contrast and color as you want. So this film might be really good for that. I'm really curious about that use case, and I think I'm gonna try it at some point. So yeah, those prints are pretty interesting. Um, I think that's where you get the true look of this film. And the good news is with this film, color temperature wise, you can kind of lean in a couple different directions. You can get a very blue kind of daylight look, or you can kind of warm it up a little bit, maybe add a little bit more green in there as well. It's up to you, but you do get that lack of saturation the same way you would get it from your scans. A couple things I want to talk about um, in terms of kind of the history of this film and where it's being made and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we know who Orwo is. Orwo is, is, has been known for making black and white film. And of course, now they're making uh, color film. How they're making color film or why? Um, I don't have all the details, so please feel free in the comments to give me your theories or your facts, whatever you got. But based on the label on this cassette, there's a couple things to kind of understand. First and foremost is um, this film says ISO 400, but the film is called NC 500. So theoretically, some of that faded color that we're getting might be because of underexposure. Maybe if you expose it at 400, uh, some of the grain disappears or it becomes less visible. Your blacks maybe get a bit more kind of saturated and have less of that um, faded look. Um, and maybe the colors overall will have more saturation. I don't know, but I think it's interesting here that it says ISO 400, but then it says NC 500. Um, you know, it's marketed as a 500 film, I think, but there's also a 400 speed film that they're making, um, which you can see on this screenshot here from their website. So not enough information out there, which I think is one of the things that Orwell should try to do a bit better. Another thing to see here is that this says Inviscoat. Inviscoat is a company that many of you may not have heard of, but Inviscoat is a manufacturing facility in Germany. Um, and I think Inviscoat was a standalone company and then maybe now either was ingested by Oro or came together. I don't know the exact terms of what happened there, but now I think they're sort of one in the same. But Inviscoat is the company that makes a lot of film, um, not just for Orwo now, but they've made a lot of film in the past. I believe they made some of the Lomography films, and I wouldn't be surprised if they made even other stuff as well. But when you talk about color film creation, you've got Kodak, you had Fuji. Some people say had, some people say have, I don't know. Not what we're discussing here. And then in Germany, you had Inviscoat, who wasn't a brand. Invisco wasn't out there marketing their own product as far as I'm aware. So it's very interesting that now you're seeing this name very blatantly on the packaging here. Um, I think there's room here for a clear story to be told by somebody, somebody with the facts. I don't have the facts, uh, but you know, Orwell, if you're watching, I'd love to learn more about this. We'd love to learn the exact kind of setup, what's going on, who's making the film, what's the organization of the company, all of those things, because all I know is that people who shoot film are very, very thirsty to have hope about the creation of film in the long run. And knowing some of these details would go a long way in giving us that hope. So really excited to learn more about this. And I'm also really excited to see what else Orwo does because it seems like they're doing a lot of different things over there. They're doing a lot of cool stuff. They're creating new film and they're coming to market with stuff. And that's really, really good for all of us to see. So have you shot this NC500 film yet? I haven't seen a lot of information on social media about it, but I know people are getting their film. So I'm really curious what your experience has been. And if you've shot the 400 film, that's definitely something I'd love to see as well. I think for a future video with this, I'm probably going to send this off to Midwest Film Lab um, to actually get this process in ECN2 and then scanned via the cinema scanning process. Because after all, this is motion picture film. Not to be confused with the motion picture film that Kodak makes, but I think the intended use for Oro for this is to go through motion picture cameras for movies. So really curious to see what else happens there. All right, y'all, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like below. And of course, share this video, subscribe, could use all the help we can get. All right, y'all, to the next one. I'm out.